so welcome everyone uh, and i will I actually say i'll welcome back to everyone to our monthly meetups in the tech talks uh, pakistan user group is very happy to reintroduce all the online sessions for our uh, for all our global audience and uh, i will not take much of the time from our uh, very famous and the guest speaker arafat i'll quickly walk you through uh, you know, what we are going to talk about today is uh, elevate your businesses with Copilot with from scratch. And believe me, I have no idea what we are going to talk about. So I will not uh, get it a mess. And I'll let the, the expert to talk about what he is going to talk about and share all the insights from the, the AI in the new world. Uh, before we continue, I'll just quickly introduce uh, about the Pakistan user group, who we are, where we are, what we are doing. So we started our Pakistan user group back in maybe four years ago. Uh, now it's a good combination, four years ago and the four members. So now we have a few more people have joined us as volunteers as uh, uh, in our team. Uh, what essentially we are doing here is uh, we are a Microsoft community. We are organizing boot camps, uh, hackathons, and we are providing a free Power Platform business applications trainings uh, to different students in person in Pakistan. Uh, so if you would like to hear and be a part of the Pakistan user group, so please do join us. You can uh, check our LinkedIn pages just go and search for the Pakistan user group and you can always check our website there. And uh, from left, we have Mustajab here. He's in Pakistan, myself, Faisal Farid, I'm in Australia, Atif, the third from the left, uh, he is in UK and Umar uh, Siddiqui, he's in Pakistan. So the way we actually have, uh, we haven't done, uh, it's all from Allah who actually made this team in a way so that we can support the community 24 seven. So once Mustajab, go to bed so i wake up and then when i go to bed uh, they wake up and uh Umar doesn't sleep at all so he he can be he can be uh answerable to all the questions at any point of time just kidding so do not message him at all uh he doesn't respond too quickly uh so with this one i'll hand over to uh, arafat arafat uh please uh, feel free to share your screen and then go ahead thank you Thank you very much. Can you hear me well? Yep, very well. All right. Okay, I'll share my screen. So thank you so much for having me on this Pakistan user group. I think it is the first time I'm presenting over here. So really delighted to be a part of it. Um, there are a couple of things which I would like to ask before we go for our discussions, but just a little bit of intro of this talk first, and then we'll ask, I'll ask a question. So the we have we have been looking out what co-pilots are. Every Microsoft event talks about co-pilot, co-pilot, co-pilot. You must have seen builds news as well. Microsoft builds. Um, the build event which has happened. So everything that is coming out from that build event, this has become builds news. So the builds news is anything that is not touching AI is not a part of build. So it has it is evident that Microsoft is pushing hard. Everybody apart from Microsoft, everybody else as in the other partners as well uh, or other technology giants as well. They are also pushing for AI. Now, of course, AI has been around, so they, this is not new, but ever since ChatGPT has come in or the applications like ChatGPT has come in, it has infused the market. The, the question is, how do we start? Number one, and everybody is talking about Copilot, Copilot, Copilot. Um, is it just Copilot Studio or is it something else as well? Uh, and if we are talking about Copilot Studio, is it production ready? Is it cheap? Is it difficult? Is it easy? Um, how can we do that? Uh, people who are from Python background or from machine learning background, they are talking differently while the business applications people are talking differently while the enterprises are talking differently. So 
this is not just one episode topic i would say um the discussion which we are going to see today is going to be developer heavy or developer centric discussion so it has nothing to do with power platform uh, although like i've could created something in power platform but that is going to come a little at a little stage the reason why i did not touch the power platform part is because if you go to youtube and search for copilot studio you may find 500 videos out of it um which is good very good um, it gives you a capability to create a lot of copilot stuff a lot of ai stuff um, without writing a single line of code as well which is nice but the proportion of having those sort those sort of tools versus enterprise level solutions are very less so for what did i mean by that is that if you go to if you start creating a copilot to copilot through your copilot studio or a bot using copilot studio i'm avoiding this term because i'll talk about it in a bit but if you start looking at it and if you start building yourself you will know very quickly that you can't push it to production for so many several reasons uh, one cost is not just the indicator but the maturity of that copilot is also an indicator so you can definitely build a very good copilot when it comes to um, postal tracking when it comes to shipment when it comes to booking a table on a restaurant when it comes to answering your hr stuff when it comes to helping out organizations but that discussion that that story will only revolve around the the tooling which you have so for example like giving you one example that if you want to ask for from that particular copilot which you are going to build using these tools that i am getting out of the airport and i want to book a taxi and after and in the middle of it i'm super hungry and i want for example a pizza or a burger suggest me something with more than four star rating you can't build that with copilot studio right um some champions will come and then talk about that that yeah we can build definitely you can build as in it was going to take a lot of your time um in terms of tweaking most of the things but i can still go very strong that it is that tooling is not yet available for you to easily build it so what we are going to talk about over here is how you can start with a very basic single line of code or a very basic empty application or a console application and how you can take that console application to a production level right so this the context was very important that's why i thought that i should set it up first um, about me, so I am Arafat Asin. I am based in Sydney, just like Faisal, who is based in Melbourne. And I am a senior engineering manager of platform engineering team in EY. I am also a Microsoft MVP for artificial intelligence, which means that I get a chance to get um, work closely with a couple of teams over there in Microsoft and provide them early feedback and whatever the MVP does. Let's talk about the next slide. So what we are going to discuss today. So you can see that. OK, so the question which I was about to ask is how do you guys want to run this? Um, I can I have got like many slides, 25 slides or something which I can which I can take like an hour to speak about. Or do you want like just very basic introductory slides and then we talk about all the demos? Just demos, I can talk about an hour. Just slides, I can talk about an hour as well. So it depends upon you. How do you want me to run it? Um, I'm either way, OK, I can talk for an hour or I can show for an hour as well. So if you anyone can um, try it down in the chat, that would be awesome. That what do you want to see? I'll definitely go through the introductory slides, but um, if you want to see more. That is going to be good. Fine, blended. Anybody else? Meanwhile, you guys write. We'll talk about this. That we'll set up the context so you know that every new applications which you see 
or you use in your day to day life, whether it is a social app, it is a work app, it is a productive productivity app, or if it is something to do with your um, daily routine, for example, grocery list or one note, for example, Evernote, um, Spotify to listen to something, Zoom to have some some kind of meetings, your social apps, um, your streaming apps, everything is now infused with AI. Artificial intelligence has become the integral part of that ecosystem. These applications which become which where AI has become an integral part of their system are also called AI first apps. So this is a new paradigm that we are talking about. Now there are many ways to build these apps. Of course, Dynamics 365 or Power Platform, which you guys are uh, mainly coming from, can definitely build. You can build using Power Platform a lot of good applications like these as well and fuse AI with it. But as we are talking from the very developer centric background and that too from a very .NET -y background, you can. There are certain frameworks, but if you are from the data scientist background, like if you are coming from Python or Java or somewhere else as well, there there are frameworks available now to build your AI first apps. And if we go a little behind how our structure, how our workflow of the AI based applications or AI first apps used to look like was this. You even for the smallest case of AI, for example, you had to book some build something for uh, eligibility criteria like you are working in a bank and you want to identify that this is the person who is going to be eligible for loan or not, whether this person is going to buy X offer or not, whether that person is whether that 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 criteria is black or white. Or you want to find out what is the housing prices looking like? What is the car shares looking like? All of that logistic um, regression kind of problems, classification kind of problems, all sort of those problems needed to have a machine learning expert build model, wrap endpoint, and then you ended up having your own product or you using your own product. Whereas ever since the OpenAI APIs have come out, or broadly now there are many LLMs, the AI development has become easier. Was this is not easier? This was easier even seven years before when Azure Cognitive Services came out, but it wasn't taking that boom which it has taken now because of the the speed or the capability which we have now. However, let's talk about this. So this has become easier for you as a developer or for you as a no code maker as well. So if you have got power platform, power apps, you are working on a power apps, you just want to con uh, utilize OpenAI API, you can do that by the, either by using the, the third party connector, you build your own and you do magical stuff over there or you write from a .NET code just a, API wrapper and you do it yourself. So how do you use AI in as a core of your app on API? There are two ways to do this. One is to write your own stuff. One, write your own wrapper, write your own orchestration layer. The other one is to use your SDK. The benefit of using SDK is because you don't have to work around the inter um, the underlying details of all of those um, SDK, like all, all of those in middleware or all of those in orchestration layer. But if you are creating your own application and if you've got a very tiny use case, I won't um, worry if I'm also using the left hand, left hand approach, which is writing my own API wrappers. However, if you want to build something scalable, you might want to go to SDK. So one of the SDKs are called semantic kernel. Um, that's what we are going to discuss today. So what is semantic kernel? Semantic kernel allows you to build copilots as well, but this is a developer centric way of doing building copilots. Um, a basic question with that always comes when when I present this is that what is the difference and that too from business applications folks that what is the difference between copilot studio and semantic kernel? There is a huge difference and we will talk about it and you will see that as well because it's a code first solution. It's a pro code solution, so you have more control as opposed to copilot studio, which is going to eventually have all of this what you are going to see today, but definitely it is taking time because there are there is a lot of engineering effort going on on that side. So there is. The, the comparison is not fair because this is 
absolutely pro code and that is sort of or you can say absolutely no code with a little bit of caveat of low code now you can you must have seen this slide everywhere in the, even during this build as well so semantic kernel sits at the ai orchestration layer um we will talk about ai agents so you must have heard about agents or copilot so the reason why i did not talk about bot because copilot when we talk about copilot it is more than just a bot and is it just a labeling? Is it just a new alias for the bot? No. Um, for example, Copilot can write, do proactive stuff from your end as well, which a normal bot or a chat bot can't do. So that's why. So you must have seen like now every with with every new um, breakthrough of AI, whether it is GPT-4 or whether it is um, Microsoft Five Three. You you can see that there are examples popping up which are beyond chatbot stuff. So for example, helping someone in a game um, while the person is playing game. Um, I saw a demo on in on build that the person was playing a Minecraft and the GPT 4O was guiding that person how to play that game. Um, and there were other demos as well you can see on online. So th that's why we are discussing about co-pilots or agents. Um, they call agents like semantic kernel has got a um, has got their own terminology. They are calling agent as a specific task doer, um, which is now which has got three main components. So you can see plugin planner persona. Persona means what is the personality you are going to build into your plugin. Oh, sorry, into your co-pilot. Plugin means the same concept as of connectors in Power Platform. Um, that how will you use to retrieve the information or push the information and planner is how do you combine all of that long utterance and break it into different small processes and then combine back again. What did I mean by that? Those who have joined late. So for example, uh, an utterance is like I'm going out so out of I'm getting out of the airport. Um, and I want to go to an X location, but in between I also want to have a food, certain type of food. I also want to book taxi. I might want to go shopping center as well. Um, so or sorry, any any supermarket as well that has got a rating more than four. So all of this big chunk of text which I've which I've spoken about a single. It is very difficult for a single bot very difficult for a single co-pilot to, to do all of that without you as a creator guiding it. So you can definitely do it chunk by chunk, but think about this utterance. This is very common, right? So we will solve this problem today. What I have talking to talk to you about. So now these are all the details. We'll not get into all of these details. I'll forget about these slides now. We'll get into the demo. So first, um, if you get into any questions, please write down on chat. I'm watching chat so we can definitely have a look at it. And if you have got any questions, we will. I, I'll stop and I'll explain the answer as well. So no, no worries. And if I think that the question, the answer is coming next, so I will call out. Um, this is the Polyglot Notebook. Um, Polyglot Notebook is the Jupyter Notebooks enhancement by Microsoft. Um, those who don't know what it is, so um, for those who are from the developer background, of course, um, you you create a lot of console apps, right? Um, just for your own testing. Um, my suggestion is that use this because this is going to help you. The reason why? Because it is very lightweight, so you can see that there is just one more one. Um, notebook over here and I've written a bunch of code with some descriptions as well for you. So the of course this is not a polyglot notebook tutorial, so I'll skip that part, um, but you can run this notebook in your machine as well. I'll tell you where it is posted. Um, it is a part of my GitHub repo, but we'll talk about it in a bit. So what I'm doing over here, I've written a C sharp code. I'm loading my OpenAI endpoints model and the API key. So, right, so I've loaded it in my settings. 
as we said that we are talking about semantic kernel, so I'm loading and downloading some semantic kernel stuff to my machine. So my package is now installed. Uh, now what we are going to do, so these are the details which I am not going to get into too much, like what AI plugins are, what prompts are, what functions are. Uh, but when we talk about code one by one, we'll, I'll explain you. So now we are going to build plugins. Uh, what is plugin? So you must have seen that what is a plugin. So if you go over here on Copilot and if you see all of that stuff, this 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 is all plugin, right? You can see these are the plugins. So that's the same plugin we are talking about. Of course, our plugin is very basic. That plugin might have something super complex, but let's see how you can build this. So this is this this is the plugin which I'm going to talk about a city plugin. What it is going to do. So I've already loaded my all the model, right? I've created my kernel. I've loaded my model into my builder. OK. Um, you must have seen over here that I've, I was loading my model. So now my model has been loaded. I'm 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 building a kernel. I've already built a kernel. My kernel is going to build up is going to call my plugin, which I've already created. My plugin is stored in my plugins folder and it has its name is city plugin. So this is my city get city plugin. So you can see that there is a city plugin within that city plugin. There is a folder called get city, which is a function. This is the JSON of that function, right? That gets a capital name of a city and the prompt as well. So tell me a capital name of the country below and this is the input which I'm going to provide. So I'll first load this plugin. So I've now loaded into my kernel. I have imported it right over here. Now as a part of my input, which you must have seen over here, I have provided Australia. So if I and you remember that we were about to get the capital of this country. So if I click on this, it will give me the capital of Australia. If I go and click on Pakistan, it will give me the capital of Pakistan, correct? That's the plugin. That's the simplest way of writing plugin. Of course, my plugin is already created. We'll talk about how do you create a sophisticated plugin in a bit. Did you see that? Did you note it down that with a very basic? I would I don't know like how many, but you can see that. Within 10 to 15 or 20 lines of code, you can get the capital city. Of any country. This is amazing because SDK is taking care of many things. So let's build a riddle game like you would ask a riddle and then the riddle. It will generate a riddle as well. So if you go to guest plugin, guest plugin has got a function called get riddle. What it does. Ask a riddle with its answer in a below JSON format, right? So it gives me an answer in a JSON format. These are the settings of my schema. Now I'm loading this plugin and I'm going to invoke this plugin as well because it does not need any argument, any parameters. It is just going to give me the riddle, right? Now there are cases that you might want to create the plugin in line rather than in file. You can do that as well. So this code will talk to you, talk about like how do you create a riddle? Create a riddle. I'm asking a riddle that ask a riddle about a mango with its answer below. So if I run this, it does not call any file. Any file. It it is not calling any file. It is invoking an inline plugin. And you can see that it has asked a plugin about asked a riddle about mango. I'm sweet and juicy with a golden who peel my skin, blah blah. This is the answer. And this is the question you can see over here, right? Um same is the case that you can also generate an image using the similar kind of code. So I am loading the models again because um, for this I'm using some different models as well for embeddings for generating the output of the image as well. So I'm using Dolly 3 over here. What it will do that it will go and it will get the plugin go into the guest plugin. So guest plugin again, right? And it will go into guess what this time. So you will see guess what. What it will do is it will go in guess what and it will say choose a landmark of a big city within a country which is input. Remember that is has to be famous, blah, blah, blah. 
the country has to be known in terms of history, culture, and tourism. So what I've given is Australia, and it has generated an opera house image. So for those who don't know um, what this is image is all about, it is opera house. So what I'm doing over here is that I have taken the output from it and also try to generate after the description, I've tried to generate the image out of Australia for Australia. Now the information which has been generated up as a part of my landmark, right? I have embedded it into this is the image description which has been which has come from my plugin and the, this is the guess which I'm going to guess this image. So if I guess this that it is a uh, Harbor Bridge, for example. So you can see that my, my answer was Harbor Bridge, but the real description was this. So what it does, it co it finds out the cosine similarity. Of course, all the details are here. I don't want to get into this because it will take more time for me to explain all of that. But this is how the embedding works. So the reason to show this is that con consider it your PDF. That's how you are going to generate your embedding out of PDF document. And when you search something, consider that as a guess text. So what it does, it also generates an embedding of your text and then it finds out the cosine similarity between these two vectors. If these vectors have got a similar angle, which is cosine similarity, it gives you the closest answer to that, which is uh, with, the, with the score of that. So closest a score to that and if against that score, it finds out the answer. Um, we'll talk about this sometime later, but I'm in a hurry, so we'll just move to the planner. So what is planner? So you remember I had a discussion. I, I was asking a question where um, you have got a big long text that I want to go to an airport or I'm getting out of airport. I want to book, book a taxi and also get in stop in between for my favorite food. These sort of multi um, scenario or you can say multi function um, utterance require more than just a basic default GPT-4 or GPT-4.0 or GPT-3.5 or chat GPT response because chat GPT or these models can give you an answer of a specific thing, but they can't. They can't chain it and that's how the chaining happens, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm installing something called I'm I'm taking. Over here loading food plugin and shopping plugin, right? In my food plugin and shopping plugin, I will show you first. So my food plugin, food plugin has is say says that generate a food recipe for input cuisine, right? That's it. Now if I come over here and if I change my food recipe to let's say Pakistani, what it will do there, it will go and it will generate a food recipe for food recipe for any Pakistani cuisine. So it has taken out chicken biryani, correct? Now it has given you the recipe for this. The reason why it may not be very concise is because I have defined my arguments that it does not take a lot of tokens. Like how can you how long you can go? So my configuration is over here. I don't want to go beyond 100 tokens, correct? So that's why it has given me this response. Now what I will do is I will take this recipe. I will take this recipe and then I will pass this recipe into another plugin which is called grocery list. This function get grocery list has got a prompt that generate a grocery list for input. So I will take this as an output and put provided as an input and then what it will do is it will go and generate the grocery list for this. Atif asked a question. Why do we need a semantic kernel when we have an AI studio or copilot studio? Good question. I will give you an answer in a short while. Um, so this is uh, so this this is the um, 
gross yield, it, it, ha it has created. Again, you can see that it has cut down because of my token limit. I don't want to invest too much time in this token limit, so that's why I. Um, sorry, like of course it's it's um tokens. More tokens means more credits. Um, I this is just for the learning purpose, so I just wanted to cut it down. Now we can mix those plugins together and to create a whole bunch of plan, right? This is called a plan. Now I'm saying that my friend is coming from China. He wants to have a Chinese cuisine in his dinner. Please suggest us the Chinese dish for the dinner as well as the grocery dish for the same. Show me the output in a clear format in a distinguished section. So what it is going to do is it is going to generate a plan first. Right, so to answer you, Atif, you can't have this control, the control which I'm showing you in your AI studio or Copilot studio. And we'll talk about this in in the next examples as well. Over here, you can control from the very bottom to a very low level. Sorry, from very low level to a very high level as well. So what it has done, it has created a plan that it will go and get a food recipe, call a food recipe plugin, and it will pass Chinese as the argument, set it in the dish, then it will get the dish list, and then it will create a grocery list out of it, and then it will mix and match, and then it will show you the output of it. So if we run this, you will see that it has generated a couple of things, but it may not be perfect. And then we will go to the perfection after this output. So you can see that it has generated Kung Pao chicken because I asked for the Chinese dish. It has generated the ingredients as well. It has what it has done that it has tried to create a grocery list, but it has mixed and matched. You can see that now it has jumbled up. The reason why it might have done it because handlers are not really robust. Handlers means this is the package by semantic kernel to create chaining, or you can say to create a plan first and then do the chaining. But let's talk about this in a bit. Let's just keep this in your mind and we'll go to the famous console app. Correct. So this is my console app. Very basic console app. This is my. This is the whole set of code. The reason what I've done the what I've done over here is I'll show you. So I've installed a couple of packages over here. Number one, I have installed semantic kernel package. I have installed semantic kernel plugin package. And I've also installed Azure Map Search. We'll talk about this in a bit. So and this is just one console application with program.cs. Right. What it does, it loads my model. It loads my endpoint. It loads my key. I am this piece of code from from chat history from line number 28 to line number 71. What it does, it just creates a loop. You can see while true, it just creates a loop of having a chat GPT. So this is exactly the 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 current version of free version of chat GPT. What we are talking about. So if I say hey. You will see the response will be coming up very, very fast. So if I say you might have not seen this fast response. Um, maybe from chat GPT as well. So if I ask a couple of questions. The reason why it has not given me this is because it does not understand what does this sentence mean? Why can anyone write why? Why is this giving me this response? If you ask ChatGPT as well, ChatGPT will also give you this response because I'm using the exact same model. So the reason why it does not know about time because ChatGPT does not have the real time information. So for example, right? So we know that now these things, these real time information is not available in any of these this in spectrum which I'm showing you. So this bot, or you can say this copilot. So let's start talking about having adding um, more information to it so that it can connect to the outside world. Number one. Number two, 
that it will become scalable in a way that it will know what needs to be called and when. You can't control this so much easily in Copilot Studio for now, for now. And we'll talk about this in a bit. But in AI Studio, Atif, you can't do this. The reason why you can't do this is because um, in Azure AI Studio, connectivity of plugins are still in preview mode. And we will see that um, if we get time. But let's let's add just one line of code to solve a couple of problems. So I have written over here, you can see that builder.plugins from add type, and I'm loading a time plugin. Time plugin is the plugin which has give provided, which has been provided by semantic kernel team themselves. So I'm I have not written this plugin. I if I go to the definition of this, what it is doing, it is just getting that system date time, correct? Now, if I run this again, the magic which you are going to see is that now if I ask what is the time right now, it will give me the time at my end at my machine because it is calling my machine's time. Correct? So this is this is where you start adding value to your existing chat GPT bot. So this is a chat GPT bot, right? Um, if I ask you um, what is. Um, if I ask about anything like, for example. OK, does it make sense? Is it good enough that it is taking it has it still think that Queen Elizabeth is a lie? This means that this model is super duper old enough that it does not even know that this Queen Elizabeth is not uh, not alive, right? Fine. OK, so now let's start adding a couple of more things very quickly. So we'll add a plugin. And. I will just. Rather than I start doing it one by one, I will just. Add one plugin for you and then. We will so this is a weather plugin which I'm going to add. Weather plugin. Um, Weather plugin is the plugin that is going to fetch a weather for us. So this is my weather plugin code, correct? I'm using weather API, very good API um, if you want to use it. So this is a weather, this is the weather API, right? You can see that um, they have got free tier as well. I'm using free tier. What we are going to see over here is that I've now injected my weather plugin. Uh, this is my function or sorry, a plugin uh, inside my. Plugin, I have provided a function. I've written a function over here and this is the syntax of writing a function. Very basic code. Everybody, every developer who has worked on a very basic API operations, they can understand this, but there are a couple of things which you might have seen it for the first time if you are seeing semantic kernel for the first time. And that is the semantic description over here. This is very, very important and we'll talk about it in a bit. So you can see that I've 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 written down name of location, right? So it will when my, when I provide this description, it only gets the dis name of this description location. It does not talk about anything else. So let's see this. Um, I have written this. I have um, run this. Now I'll say what is the weather looking like in Sydney? So what it is going to do is is oh, just a minute. Because we have not we have written down the plugin, but we have not injected it in our. Code so the reason the way to write or to inject it into our. Kernel is by just writing this line of code. Right, you just add it from the project from the object. This is the weather plugin. And the type is also weather plugin. Now if I ask it again. What is the weather in Sydney? So what it is going to do, it is going to go and call the weather API. And then it will give you the. Whole information. Cool. Now, since I've got very few minutes left, so what I will do is I will bring in my existing project, which is the same. 
um, and I will show you that what else I have done it over here. So this is my project uh, which I have which is more built in. So they, it has got weather plugin. It has got flight trigger plugin and it has got suggestions plugin. So what I and exactly same code so you can see exactly same code. Um, I will give you this code as well, so don't worry. You will get everything. Now, if I come over here and if I start writing, uh, asking about a couple of things. So tell me what is the weather in Melbourne, which is always bad. Um, it will go and find out the weather, correct? If I say what is the best What it is going to do is it is going to find out the best coffee shop because and it has given its best coffee shop what it thinks and the reason why it is it has done it is because this plugin is called right right now if I ask and I will put a breakpoint so that you know that I'm not making up <laughs> so if I ask um what is the flight status from Sydney to Bangkok? So you can see that it is it has come over here. And now the reason why I put breakpoint is because what should come into the source and what should come into the destination? Can anyone write it on the chat? My utterance is this. This is my utterance. Can anyone Right, what is going to come in source and location, source and destination? No, okay. So in source, you will see the IATA code rather than Sydney, and in destination, you will see the IATA code of Bangkok. For this to convert, because API does not understand Sydney or Bangkok, API understand the IATA code, and that's the beauty of semantic kernel, that it uses AI to solve the AI problem. Now, if I run this, it will go and call this API, and it will give you the output, whatever the output it will get from the service. Now, sometimes it gets delayed because we are using free service but that's okay i just wanted to show you that it has still gone um, it has still called out this function so it means that whatever the fun whatever the information i'm showing you is not like i'm making up um, sometimes it gets delayed because we are using a flight away flight um, aviation stack api which sometimes gets delayed so if i run it again it might work what is the flight status from sydney to melbourne So now it has come over here. So if I go again, so you can see that. Um, as I said, that sometimes it big brings back the result, otherwise it times out. But that's that's not a problem. Like we are not discussing over here. Um, if anybody wants to see that, how does it work? I've got a whole video to do that. But this is this is my idea. Now the last bit which I will talk to you about is, um, okay, the response has come interestingly. Right. So you can see that. The response has come. Right. Um, I have pressed, pressed enter. That's why it is saying empty value string, but you can see the response has come. Now, the last bit which I wanted to talk about is you must have seen that I have talked about three different operations. So it knows it knew that which one to call. How does it know which one to call? This is an interesting problem, right? Your 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 model was did not know how which one to call which plugin to call how did it realize that which ones to call the reason why it figured out that which one to call is by the semantic description of this function and now if we say if i ask a question that i want to know the weather of as well as the wide is So now I've asked two different things from 
from this bot right or copilot it is it has given me the weather status and it has also given me the flight status correct now you can see that how it got to know that i should ask for weather first and flight later number one and these are the only two plugins which i need to call not the third one right so this beauty is called function calling uh, for those who don't know but for those who know that what function calling function calling is um, is that you can I just have to enable it with my single line and that was how do you call the functions so over here I'm saying auto invoke kernel functions it means that it is the function calling is enabled um, Javid ask a question can we use all this in Dataverse plugin then we call custom APIs um, you can use this but it will destroy or defeat the purpose I will tell you why so you if you are going to use this in Dataverse plugin I think it's better to use outside of this like you can create a custom connector and then start working with it rather than using it in the plugin or did you mean that we call it just from the plugin outside if you meant that then yes you can do that um, but I'm not sure like how useful it is going to be why not you are just creating a separate app um, and embedding into your application like in your dynamics um, this is it from the demo side, but I want to show something. So just give me a minute. So yes, so these are the things. So this is generative AI um, repo. It has got everything which I've shown you, even the custom copilot which I've shown you. So uh, notebook, if you go to .NET, you will see custom copilot over here. It has also got multimodal chat, like it talks about speech is with the speech as well. You can see. Um, I don't have time to talk about otherwise I would have loved to. Um, this is the semantic kernel notebook which I was showing you as well. So if you go to .NET, if you go, this is the orchestrator notebook which I was showing you. So I keep these, keep keep it updated whenever I update something. So if you like um, this repo, please give it a star. That is going to be a big help from from your side for the community of course not for me i'm not earning from this so far um and yeah that's it i will go back to my slide and put it in my next last slide rather than the next slide anybody has got oh yes sorry last last thing which i wanted to show so if you go to um blog you will see this blog and this has got all the details which I talked about. So you can see that if you ask the same question from my friend is coming from Thailand, blah, blah, blah. Chat GPT is not going to the response, but the copilot which you are going to build is going to build your response. I have shown the step by step. How do you do that? So if you want to have a look at it, you can look at it as well. I hope I am on time. So that's my details. If anybody wants to have a chat with me, add me on LinkedIn, no problem. Or email me. Over to you, Mr. Fessel. Any questions from anyone? Any questions from anyone? <laughs> All right, I will stop my screen. Sorry. All right, thank you. No problem, sir. So, no more questions there? That's good. If we do not have any more question means like everyone understood or maybe no one understand what no we have talked about. Yes. That's right. Maybe no one understood. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I forgot one thing, but that's okay. If does anybody want to know anything on Power Platform very quickly? No. 
I think so. Javed or someone else might have raised yeah. a question there. The yeah, yeah. I, I've I've responded back to Javed. Yeah, fine. That's okay. okay. We'll we'll talk about Power Platform Copilot later on for sure. Not a problem. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, now it's a never-ending topic. The Copilot is here. So yes. everyone is talking about the Copilot. Copilot. So we will keep talking about the Copilot. Javed, you got a hand hand raise up. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for uh, this awesome uh, session. I've got a question around uh, distribution. Like, so if we think about building this in, let's say, you know, as I, as I ask a question in a Dataverse plugin, and you say now you can do that in a connector. Uh, yes. If we think about distributing this to, let's say, customers, you know, yes. Uh, how does yeah. that look like? Yeah. So I would, if you are talking about putting it in Dynamics, for example, I would put it as a separate application rather than become making a part of as a Dynamics app, Dynamics plugin. Um, like I would put it as a, as a part of, for example, I would put it as a part of maybe Power App custom page or something like that. Or if you ask me, a better solution would be to have a separate application, a React application, because of the cost it is going to get involved in. So for example, Power, if you are using the Power Platform ecosystem, then this might not be the best solution. Rather than Copilot Studio is the best solution because you can create, you can get all of that what I've shown you from the Copilot as well, with a little less control on on this. Because Copilot Studio being a pro code, being a slightly no code, low code solution, will not give you the capability of removing or adding plugins in this manner, the way I have shown you, uh, but if you want to remain in the business applications spectrum, my suggestion is to use Copilot Studio. The rollout will be easier. The bot, the Copilot rollout will be easier. If we are talking about the custom applications, definitely it is going to be hosted as a part of app service or a bot service in Azure. And this is how you are going to uh, distribute it to your customers. So in our past, what I've done is that we distributed using Azure Bot Service because it becomes a easy part for, for example, the organizations to embed it into Teams and other channels as well. Yes, Omar, you've got a question. Yeah, Arafat, thank you. Just a quick one. Uh, I know it might, might not be the topic for today, but just think around the differences between uh, you're talking about the uh, benefits of custom and the co-pilot one. Yes, yes. So, can we do a bit shed a light around uh, the licensing impact. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so, uh, so it can be easier, like uh, when to decide. If it's an easy factor. Uh, yes, I, an I, important factor when to decide what to do. Yes, absolutely. This is this is this is becoming a hot topic. Um, so, I think so. There are many cases. For first of all, that. Copilot Studios is still very relevant and very, very relevant. And with the new latest updates, except for the generative AI updates, which are in preview, I will never go with those updates in production, of course. But they have also released a very, or now it is being released a competitive pricing model. Now, when it comes to licensing, Omer, I think the way we, the way we are de doing it over here is that what is their ask? So if their ask is outside of Dynamics or they are fine with it, for example, they are they they don't they are not a customer of business applications, then we are not even talking about business applications from the first day. If they are if they have got both the stack running up, for example, they are a customer, Microsoft big customer, they have got Power Platform running, they have got M365 running and Azure running as well. Uh, where do they want this business to first first of all? And if their business usage is not as much as that as much as that they are going to suffer in terms of the license implications like for example they are they don't have 500 users using the chatbot or copilot at the same time then definite and they want to surface this in their power platform ecosystem or in teams for example we will go with copilot studio because because it is going to cost cheaper just because it is simple use case and License cost, but the maintainability and everything will become very easier. For this case, if you are only going with sophisticated um, 
approach of building having customization at your end and then you want to surface it in your application such as react or react portal such as custom bespoke applications within your organization as well um, then i think this will this will be a best better candidate or or the cost implication of this is nearly zero because the semantic kernel is free dotnet is free the only cost which you are bearing is the azure hosting cost for that because you are not doing anything else with this licensing so the cost wise our copilot studio is of course on the expensive side with but less maintainability over here more maintainability but less cost so it depends upon case to case i hope it answers your question i would have like been a little articulated but you must have got my gist yeah yeah uh, thank you very much and, and i know it's not something that uh, we can objectively close in this short yeah. call it's yes. always have so many factors but definitely yes. but i believe in future we can this we can have a session that can Absolutely. we can have a, we can drill down the yeah. impacts and the cost things and the scenarios yeah yeah thank you very and, much yeah. no problem no problem there is one more thing which is coming up is is the atif mentioned as well like as your ai studio so i think it is also going to be a very big candidate in terms of decision as a decision factor so yeah that that i agree that i think it is going to be we'll see that if we can host another session about this just this uh, differentiating factors and yes we will for sure it will always pleasure to have you uh, arafat and with this one we are right on time just conscious of a time uh, it's a bit, it's almost late evening here in, in australia in melbourne i don't want to hold you long i know you are hungry you have to go you have to finish your maybe you have to buy something first and then you have to eat it uh, so with this one i will quickly share my screen here just would like to press show uh, who we got next Uh, as uh, I hope you can see my screen, I'm sharing the right screen. Uh, uh, Adil, uh, Adil Khan, sorry, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Adil Khan, do you see the same screen, uh, Arafat? I can see. Yes, yes. Yeah, all good, perfect. Yeah. So yeah, I can uh, see your screen yeah. for sure. Sorry, I Mama. had to go off for camera. No, it's all good, mate. Thank you. And uh, Muhammad Ad Adil Khan, he's joining us next month on. Friday, 30th of June, at the same time, at 12:30 Pakistan time and 5:30 Australian time. He is in Singapore-based uh, Microsoft uh, guy, and let's see what he got uh, to discuss about uh, all about the CRM and the generative AI. As I said earlier, uh, our tech talks are going to cover mostly onto the Microsoft Business applications and uh, AI. So thank you so much for joining us today. I'm going to paste some links into a chat for you. Please follow us on our LinkedIn website and the YouTube. Uh, we do have our Instagram. Sorry, I do not have the link handy right now, but we will ensure we will have all these links where ready for you to uh, subscribe to us. With this one, thank you so much, everyone, and have a good day and good day.